Okay, so let's just test the audio a little bit and we're gonna start. Perfect, it's working perfectly. So, um, today we're gonna be talking about the resample curve node. Uh, this node is really interesting. Uh, it's really easy to use, so I'm gonna be explaining it like um, really fast. Okay, so um, the um, like the, what the manual says about this node is that the resample curve node creates a, a polyspline for each input spline. So uh, in the count and length modes, the control points of the new polysplines will have uniform spacing. Okay. So um, what this node uh, does is that, for example, if your curve has like, uh, I don't know, like uh, 20 um, splines, uh, this, these nodes creates the amount of, of splines of the count or the amount of, spl of splines of the, um, that are like, um, that they that the node can put in the length. So let's just try to check the node, um, and um, we can use this object. So we're gonna create a new geometry node, and then we're gonna just be adding a curve, a curve primitive. Uh, it can be like uh, let's use an arc. Okay. So, um, and let's just start by using the, um, the, resample, the resample curve node, okay? Um, I think we can like maybe decrease the resolution just to see the effect of the, of the node, okay? So here in curve, we're gonna be able to go to resample curve and uh, we can just put it here, okay? You can see that uh, it seems like anything has changed, but it's because like the resolution of the curve, the normal resolution of the curve is 10, and the count of uh, the resample curve nodes is 10 also. Well, of the normal resolution that we left here. So for example, if we move it to, I don't know, like uh, 14, and we try again, like, you see? Like this is how the curve will normally look like, and, um this is how it looks this is how it looks with the resample curve node okay because now only has like 10 splines or 9 or 8 or 7 6 5 4 3 2 or 1 <laughs> that we of course can't notice okay so uh that's basically it with this with this with this part so if you have it in count, it's just gonna be adding splines, um, like with the count that you that you put in there. Okay. Uh, if you have it in length, uh, it's gonna be like every uh, certain um, space is gonna be adding like uh, a spline. Okay. So for example, here is like adding a spline every 1.3 meters. Um, here is adding a spline every 1.4 meters, okay? So um, that's how the splines are gonna be counted. So let's just, uh, we can like try to um, increase the resolution of this, maybe the radius, yeah, great, perfect. Um, so as you can see, like uh, if the radius changes, like it changes too. You know, but if you try by using the count, it's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be changing that much because it's always gonna have the same number. Okay, so um, let's just try to, uh, let's just try to check that. And okay, radius. So you see, like it's always gonna have the same number, so there's not gonna be that that much changes but with the length it has changes okay because every certain amount of um of space is going to be adding a curve uh, a spline i'm sorry uh well let's see what else the manual says 
Mm, let's just check. So it says also that um well um there's here's like a tip that says like we can use a file as an input to have a different count length for each line. So um honestly I'm not I'm not sure of how this works. I mean I try to uh check on that but it, it doesn't seem to be um to be working. Uh, like I don't know why it's exactly this file input that it, that it wants. Um so so yeah, I'm not I'm not that sure honestly. Um Okay, so uh, here it says like the inputs. So uh, basically, the curve that we put in the in here, um, this is like the standard geometry input that it needs to be a curve. If you put a mesh here, anything's gonna happen. Uh, here is the selection. So whether or not to resample each spline, uh, true true values mean spline will be resampled to a poly spline. False values mean the spline will be unaffected. Okay, so um, in order for you to use this uh, value, you can like um, uh, you need to use like a boolean. So you can use like the input, and here is going to be like the boolean. So you can animate this actually, and for example, if you um, if you want the curve to be resampled. You just have to you just have to check this. If you don't want the curve to be resampled, you can do this, okay? And as you can see, like it's gonna be the same result. This is gonna be the same result as if you put the 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 curve directly to the output, okay? But if you want it to be resampled, you just click here, okay? And you can. Um, as, as I'm saying, you can like animate that, okay? Um, you can also, for example, like try to, um, well, let's just not play with the group input right now. But um, basically that's it. Um, so uh, what else the manual says? Okay, so um, let's just check. So it says like the count, so the number of control points of the new splines. So um, as I told you, like if you want it to have, how many control points do you want it to have? The length is the approximated length between the control points of the new splines. So uh, this is the option for the, um, for the if, if we put length here um, in the mode length. Uh, and here is a tip for the length. So uh, a trim curve node can be used with a multiple with a multiple of the input length to make the distance between each sample point exact, even when the length of the spline changes. So um, how can we like uh, use this? Okay, so uh, basically what this is saying is like. Um, Let's just let's just try to to use that, okay? So, for example, if we mm, add uh, a trim curve node, so curve. Uh, let's just go to trim curve, and let's just uh, connect it here, okay? So, uh, and let's just use it with length. So, for example, if we Oh, okay, let me just go ahead and, um, if for example, here in the option of length, right, we put something sort of like uh, five, let's just try with five meters, okay, and um, let's just increase a little, a little bit the radius of this, um, and, um, well, I think that will be it. Um, let's just use four meters, maybe, and um, or maybe maybe three. Okay, perfect. So and let's just increase this. Okay. So um, this trim curve can be 
like can have like um a multiple of this number okay so uh for example if you try by uh i just don't know with how much is the length of, of the of this curve i think we can like um take it by using curve length so curve mm, curve length node and we can like connect this here and uh now we have the length of the of the curve so it must be here yeah it's just that we don't know how much is it okay um so for example if you have like uh a length of 30 you know so it's always going to be having like the same amount of um of of vertices in ver vertices so um i'm just like if you click here in six six is a it's a multiple of uh 30 so it's gonna be oh i'm sorry three okay this used to make sense but uh okay now we can see here like uh, if you have more than 30 you see uh, because it, every three meters you're gonna have um, a spline right a, a control point every two meter, three meters you're gonna have a control point but um, if you set this to 30 it, they're gonna be there like those control points are always gonna be the same number you know but if you for example say something like um, I don't know like i want to divide this in 29.9 you see that it changed you see that it's but it, it now it has like the same numbers and it's going to have the same numbers until 27 you see because um then it loses one it loses one number you see that's uh that's what it's trying to say the the manual you know like if you want to um to make the distance between each sample point exact like really really exact uh then you can use um then you can use a multiple of the of that uh length like you can leave the curve with a specific length and and then use uh, a multiple of that okay so the properties are like the mode so how do you specify the amount of samples so um, basically there are three modes count sample the specified number of points along each spline so it's going to have a specific number of points and the length it calculates the number of samples by it's splitting each spline into segments with this specified length so it's it's gonna depend on the length of the spline the amount of uh, points that it has the line would be rounded so the length will be rounded down so that a whole number of samples will fit each input spline okay this is really important so the length will be rounded down so that a whole number of samples will fit in each input spline that's basically it um what else it says um, evaluate it eval evaluate the splines points based on the resolution attribute of nerves okay and best your splines so um what it does and it's just um so uh for example you can see here that this every every um every curve right has a resolution here you see um so let's just try to take this away let's just connect it here so um it has a resolution and if you for example if you just uh click on evaluate it 
what it's doing is that is like making an evaluation from this uh, resolution okay so if you decrease the number of the resolution it's going to be uh, changing the evaluation also you know um, that's basically it that's how it works okay so it just evaluates the um, uh, the number but I think that it works better like with the um, um, with a different type of curve than an arc because as you can see here like uh, here is like giving us the same amount let's just try to use um, I don't know let's just try it by using um, maybe a Bessier segment um, Okay, let's just get closer and let's just try with the no well it doesn't seems to change that much actually it doesn't well it it, it does it does change um like here you have like two control points you see uh, and here, if you connect this one, you'll have like 17 for control points, you know, because you're turning this Bezier segment into a poly spline. So you need to uh, be aware of the fact that, uh, I mean, you need, you need to be aware if your curve is a poly spline, if it is a um, Bezier of, or if it is a nerve, you know, because that's going to be really important for this process that it's going to be doing. Now it has a lot of points, you know, uh, that is really different than here, for example. You see? So that's what it's going on. The control points are increasing. You see? It's just, uh, for example, here the resolution is 11, but here, um, but it's like turned into control points. Here is just resolution, you know? So there are two control points with a resolution. There is nothing else, you know. That's what is making the the curve. But if you connect this one, then you're gonna have control points. You see, uh, based on that on that resolution, okay. And that is gonna work a lot. For example, if you want to, with this new geometry, if you want to, I don't know, like um, like if you want to put objects. Uh, in your curve, it's just like, uh, let me just check. Um, okay. Um, well, we can just like try it with uh, curve to points, for example. You see, if you want to create points, uh, that is going to be really important. It's going to really depend on that, um, on that resolution, you see. Uh, but there's another another um, another note that you can like use to see how important is that. It's just that um, well, we don't have that much time. So uh, and the output is gonna be just like the the curve. So basically, it's just gonna be a geometry output. So well, a curve, <laughs> and and that's what you are going to have basically. And let me just try to find if, uh, no, we can check that um, in, a, in another time. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, that'll be it. So for the next time, we're going to be talking about the, um, let me just check. Oh, so our next node is like the reverse curve node. Uh, it seems really easy to use. Um, and we're going to be talking about it. Okay. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like it, please su subscribe and uh, like the video. And thank you. See you next time.